Chapter 13 of Motion. We're going to quick, do a quick review of the biology. Ah! What happens in your body system when you're faced with this horrible scene? All right, so we're really looking at the nervous system here. Yeah, we have the central and stuff like that, but what we're really interested in here is the peripheral. We have the autonomic controls and the somatic controls. Remember, this is what we talked about uh, in terms of what gets measured in terms of lie detectors. And then uh, in terms of measuring emotions, we can really talk about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. You're going to see these systems a lot. This is the second chapter that we've kind of looked at them. All right, so what we really need to focus on here in the central nervous system is what are the impacts of arousing versus what is the impacts of calming. So you can go through and see that there are several body systems that are impacted, pupils, heartbeats, etc. And you can take a quick look at that and you should know those for the test. All right, we're going to quick review here. These are the big ones without the big body in the middle. We have the eyes, salivation, skin, respiration, heart, digestion, and renal gland adrenal glands. So you really should know these in terms of sympathetic and parasympathetic, and it would be great if we could come up with some uh, mnemonic to be able to remember these. All right, so the sympathetic nervous system is aroused. We've talked a lot about fight or flight response, kind of helps bring those together. And we know that different emotions stimulate different responses. So we have whose theory? Hmm, z, z talks about changes in skin temperature, okay, in terms of fear. Here's an example of skin temperatures in terms of anger. Have you thought of them yet? Yes. Sanic. Right. And we know that each of the emotions tend to involve a, dis a distinct neural circuit in the brain. Now, so how do we deal with the cognition versus um, the James Lang theory where it automatically leads to it. Well, one of the things that they're thinking right now is that in the middle of the brain here, the limbic system, right, there seems to be uh, different ways that we can send the messages. So if a visual comes in, right, and arouses it in the thalamus, the thalamus is sort of the director, right, and so the director can send a direct message here to the amygdala and says, danger, danger, there is a snake. We can also have a secondary system, which is the visual cortex here, that also sends information. This is slightly slower, all right? But uh, this other interpretation can perhaps look at the difference of, you know, can the cognition come in here and say, oh, yes, it's a snake, but it's my pet snake. And therefore, you don't have that kind of arousal. In addition, new stuff, frontal lobes. We know that um, in the frontal lobes there is a certain decision-making process that goes on, um, which would account for the cognition aspect. And so what research now is saying is that they think it's happening over here in the frontal lobe, in which uh, some things seem to indicate that the left must be involved in processing positive emotions, and perhaps the um, right frontal lobe is uh, involved with negative emotions. Um, we also know that they have four emotions that they have mapped, uh, sadness, happiness, anger, and fear in terms of brain scans. All right, so repeat, here we go. Thalamus in the limbic system, right? It receives the visual information, right? You join that in with the visual information, and together it can completely bypass and create an alarm system. All right, and here we have the sympathetic nervous system, which we talked about uh, in terms of the body system, and here's where we would uh, release certain hormones uh, that we would need to defend us from that naughty snake. That's all, folks.